Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. Finally. All right. So, welcome everybody to the I-95 Who's podcast. I have the esteemed pleasure of being with the newest head coach of the AI Women's Basketball Program out of Wilmington, Delaware, Mr. Robert Price. Um, how's it feel? How's it feel to be the new head coach of AI? Feels like that brand new car feeling. You know, you want to you want to get it, want to drive it. Just that, just that new feeling, that fresh feeling. You know, it's a little different. You know, with all the grinding. You know, all the just just getting here, the actual bump and grind to get here. Right. It's like a, but it's never relief. You got to keep working, keep pushing. So that's all. So um, I know getting over AI, they had a really talented young lady last year to play on the boys team. It was a little, you know, because of COVID or whatever. So what is it going to look like building a team this year? Like, is it is it a straight rebuild? You have no clue what's going on. Cause I know you. I know you were at another school last year, correct? You were at Brandywine. Yeah, Brandywine. We were. Uh, we've been through a lot. It was a lot going on there. Uh, before I got there, they had two zero wins, two wins, four wins to a twelve wins. When I get there, and then another uh, 12, 12 and one season. We went thirteen and zero. So we lost two seniors. They would. They would, They'll be having. Four, five seniors coming back. Four of them are starters. Okay. So, you know, you've been you've been in the foxhole with them. So it's a little different. I was a little torn, you know, mm -hmm. about it. Uh, you know, the actual decision at first because I knew I've been the trenches with them, been the foxhole with them. You see them grow. You want them to grow. You want you know you're watching them grow up, and it's a little hard, you know, you know, because you're. Because you're with them every day, almost you know, for, right. for like three or four months, and then basketball is always off the court as well. So you're with them 365. It's never just two months, but basketball wise, two months, three months. So uh, now that you're at AI, what is it going to look like? Is it like I said? Is it a rebuild, or you got a? I know you got a. I know you got a young, talented young lady. So you got one piece, and everything is completely brand new. You sight unseen. Yeah, you know, it's hard because I don't know, because of COVID, no, they didn't even play. Right. After coming with fresh idea, fresh mind, optimistic. Also trying to find those hidden gems, you know, because they had nobody playing two years, really. So they got to be two years worth of hidden gems around there. So right. I know hidden talent there, just getting them out to come on out. So okay. I'm, I'm actually hoping and banking on that. If not, you know, we're 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 going back to basics one on one. So it's nothing wrong with that. Fundamental we, approach. Okay. And so that helps as well. But if if we can go and speed things up a little bit, it's all part of the process. You can't really skip anything, but it's all part of the process. It's just getting hands on, getting in there and getting everybody on board and just going from there. So um Let's talk about you a little bit more. Let's get let's get into you a little bit and get your background. This is the, this gonna be this is your first time on a podcast, but I can promise you it won't be the last. So let's mm -hmm. let's go back to the beginning. When did you fall in love with the game? Oh wow, uh, four or five years old. And where was uh, that? It's funny. My grandmother, uh, my dad's mother, she played basketball in South Carolina in college, also back in South Carolina. So she was already had the love. And every time I go to her house, we just watch Kyle's basketball and watch the pros too. But uh, but uh, we always watch college basketball. Her team was Georgetown Hoyas. She loved, she loved the Hoyas. She loved John Thompson coaching. She loved just his atmosphere, how he was a father, a coach, a mentor, the whole nine to them. So she always loved how he coached. And she was like, that's what a basketball coach is supposed to be like. So by her, by her instilling that into me, watching how they played and they played, you know, structure under him, and right. and I fell in love with North Carolina around the same time. So it was a little bit of both because you know here in Delaware we get all the Big East teams first. Right. So I could see someone different was different, 
on ABC back in the day. So, and then, you know, of course, we always got big East games. We got Villanova, we got uh, UConn, Syracuse, Georgetown, St. John. So, you know, during that time, the game was still in the, in the, in the peak. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, Big East was jumping. So, Heck yeah. So, you've been at this a while. So, who were your, um, some of your coaching influences? Like, people that coached you maybe growing up, Little League, travel, that you pull from now as a coach? Oh, man, I pull, I pull from them all. <laughs> uh, I mean, you don't got to name them all, but give us some names. Some names we may know, some names we may not know. Uh, Darren Kellum, Ghost. Paul Brown, Ron Handy, uh, Diamonds, uh, Lex, uh, who else? Um, uh, Coach Lee. Uh, well, I'm trying so to you, say. You come from, so, so you come from good coaching stock, it sounds like. Yeah, uh, Coach all Craig. Different, all different, all different, all different, all different in their approach, but master uh, teachers of the game. Oh, yeah. And you got to learn how to. And it's funny with those kind of coaches, they all showed me different levels of the game. Hard nosed, tough, uh, never, never weak minded, uh, fundamentally sound, you know, you know, the actual love of the game. You always learn. You worked hard. You know, never, never a day off, no matter if it's on the road or home, anywhere else. Just just instilling the love of the game. And knowing that you, you got to work on your craft every day, and so do you approach. Uh, you, so you said work on your craft every day as a player. So do you take that same approach? Now that you're a coach, are you more of a are you more of an X and O guy? Or are you more of a uh, a skill and drill guy that knows X and O? Are you a little bit of both? A little bit of both. You got to be versatile okay. because the kids, you know, when we were growing up. You could you could see a kid working on his game like you could tell like you could know the kids now I don't trust them at all you know you know so you would I would need to see it so at least by me working you out and seeing you do it I know you're doing it not mean right. that you're not but I know you are doing it. I probably had to get my pen I'm I'm actually taking these notes and knocking these questions down so. No. Let's talk about your coaching journey. When did you really get – let's go from the coaching journey from the very first time you stood on the <laughs> sideline and told a kid what to do. Let's bring us from there all the way to now getting your first head coaching job. And I want to say congratulations to you getting your fair head coaching job after um, you've been a part of what I believe is two Flight B championships and 20-something 20, yeah. 20 accumulative wins in two years from turn the program around. So let's talk about your coaching journey from the beginning, and then we'll we'll get to the highlights at the end of it. All right. Uh, Twelve years old now, Browns Boys and Girls Club. Uh, James Christmas was working the pool one day, one afternoon, and he's like, you know, you know, basketball's ready to come up. So I can't wait. Cause I'm ready to play twelve or fourteen. So I'm already, you know, from working out all summer long, playing the classic, you know, getting ready, playing the club in the dungeon. So I'm getting ready to play twelve fourteen. Christmas says, hey, man, you should be the coach for 9-11. I'm like, coach? He said, man, listen, you're a role model here. You're knowledgeable. You know the game inside and out. The kids would love it. They touch you. They talk to you. You're the role model. Like You're the hero. You should be able to coach them and do it. You're telling a 12-year-old who's not even seen their prime, been in their prime, just doing it to play. The heck, no, I'm not doing that. No, my mind is trying to get my thing right. So he said, you know, take a couple of days, just think about it and just see what I'm talking about. So I'm in the gym playing around, playing. The younger kids are watching me play. And it clicked. And I was like, oh, this thing's a little bigger than me. Mm -hmm. So I came back to him the third day. was like, you know what? I'm a coach. Him. And so that, means, so that means you was going to play 13 and 15. And then coach the nine to eleven, nine to it, nine, yeah. nine to eleven. What is it? Nine, nine to 12, 12, 13, 15. So you was gonna yeah. play on 13, 15, even though you wasn't old enough. And then the team you should have been playing on, you was gonna coach the team you should have been playing on. Yeah. So I said, you know what? Why not? So I went, coached them, still played, still played up. And uh it was fun because I really saw the game on the sideline. 
differently than playing. So mm. I had a 